What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Shoot with TF and, and I'm filling in for Tom today. He'll be gone sometime uh, this week. Well, gotta move into our new place, which is super awesome. I got the uh, bought the duck from home. This is a crazy I was thinking about this, how an insane investment vehicle this was, right? Because like two years ago, these I have so many of these for some reason. Forty dollars and the market caught up, the trading up into the hundreds, it's unbelievable. So if you're looking for an exotic investment opportunity, look at some carved decoy ducks. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now. We have the DXY really coming off, okay? And this is bringing some nice uh, buying pressure in the market, uh, as well as in gold, of course, gold is moving up significantly. We're up at 2608 right now. Uh, silver not doing too much, especially, I mean, obviously, you know, we have a pretty straight up vertical with that. Um, but, you know, that tends to move at a greater magnitude than gold, and so it's uh, fantastic to see that coming up. I wonder if we'll get a kind of a lag um, in the movement price with silver as well. But needless to say, gold is doing uh, pretty well as it is. Of course, we're going to have Tim Ord on tomorrow as well, and uh, him and Tom have great discussions on gold. If you're interested more in kind of learning a little bit about the metals market, we do have on TFNN.com under the newsletters tab uh, the gold report by Tom O'Brien. Uh, Tom has been killing it this year on returns in that portfolio. Uh, really fantastic stuff. And, it, and then copper, I love it. I love seeing it up like this, up 4.26%. Of course, this year has been kind of rough uh, for copper in general, um, but we are, we're we're moving up and pretty steady as it is. And, um, of course, not from that high of 519, uh, but we'll see if we can get some moving back up on that. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have the YM trading up above the 42,000 with the Dow Jones itself right under there at 41,629. Uh, this recovery has been pretty nuts. I mean, look at the ES Mini, right? I mean, kind of a, basically a mimic, right, of like with the SPY, even though these are the futures. Um, trading up right under 5,700. If you look at the SPY, we're right under the all-time highs uh, in it as well. Trading 562. We got this five. 65 here. Um, quite interesting. Now, these past few days have been on some contracting volume. Now, of course, that was Friday. Uh, so we'll see how that shakes out this week. A lot of this is all kind of dependent on what Powell does, right? And there is a lot of discussion. Uh, you know, is it going to be a 25 uh, basis point cut or is it going to be a 50? Of course, I think the biggest problem right now that the Fed is uh, essentially going to face uh, is going to be the jobs, right? You know, with anything that has to do with these kind of monetary policies, things kind of work very slow until they don't, right? And I, what I mean by that is you get a slow contraction in, in job growth, you maybe get an increase in some areas with um, unemployment, um, but you can run into an issue where, you know, the preceding months, or excuse me, the succeeding months from that point uh, can see uh, very fast and, and rapid explosions in those numbers. Uh, which it's much harder to get companies to start new job openings uh, than it is to destroy jobs. So we'll see what happens with that and what the Fed wants to do. I mean, it seems like Powell, throughout all this, has been a relatively conservative guy. And so I'm currently erring maybe more on the side of a 25 basis point cut and then just see how the market responds to that. Uh, but no doubt, um, you have a lot of people you know, riding on this essentially. And you're seeing the dollar go down too. Uh, you know, you're seeing bonds uh, go up in price. So anyways, I think a lot of people are anticipating a much higher uh, rate cut than 25 basis points, uh, but we'll see what happens. I think some other large firms like BlackRock uh, are also saying that 50 uh, might be a little bit too much of a pipe dream, but we'll see what happens with that. The Russell up 0.32%, those NQs off about 0.53% of it. The video is getting hit a little bit. Micron's getting hit a little bit. You have Intel coming up. And I'm just going to do, you know, my monologue on this again. Okay, let me get the exact numbers, right? So the government's giving them more money, which is great, right? So they're receiving more government funding, uh, about $3.5 billion in funding to make chips for the Defense Department. In addition to the billions, the company was awarded under the Chips in Science Act. Um, I, I still don't see what their path forward is right now. I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, the, the greatest threat that can occur, right, is these guys get, you know, I think, delisted from the S&P 500. Uh, they continue to kind of botch some stuff like they did with Raptor Lake. They did something else with where they lost developing chips for PlayStations, 
uh, new series, which is a horrible loss on uh, potential revenue for them, right? I think the biggest threat, and I don't know what it would take to get this there, and this is not something that I think is highly likely, right? But I mean, the, the American government needs a company that is going to produce chips natively, right? And so the big thing that Intel is riding on right now is the foundry, right? So where they're doing something pretty similar to what Taiwan Semiconductor does, where they don't really care about designing the chips. I mean, Intel does CPUs, not GPUs. Um, but if you have a foundry to develop this kind of stuff, you know, in theory, you could just pump out a bunch of GPUs. Well, we learned last week that the capacity uh, was still not good, right? They lost out on a big contract uh, because they couldn't effectively produce uh, certain GPUs at volume. Uh, so that was a tough hit for them. Uh, and I fear at some certain point, if it continues to go this route and they, they really can't do anything properly, the government still needs something that's going to be able to produce um, nationally. And, you know, you run a risk of, I mean, does this thing, you know, five years down the line, six years down the line go like private or something like that, right? Because there's so much uh, government interest. It's kind of interesting to think about, and I'm not sure, I think, the you know, that's a pretty low chance. Uh, but regardless, the stock still has problems, right? I mean, you have a volume move up today, right? But not nearly as much on the volume on the way down. I think we're going to consolidate and do just a little serpentine pattern like this is right now because they're not adding anything Currently, on that Sony deal, which is a massive issue, they lost $30 billion in potential revenue. Uh, and this is per internal Intel projections for missing out on PlayStation 6 chip contract. Uh, they lost this to AMD, which is super rough. This is uh, reported today on it. Um, 2022, Sony and Intel held months long negotiations. Uh, and what was the issue? It was the amount of royalties that Intel wanted to receive from selling the custom chips. And uh, Sony decided to go with AMD, which is a horrible reason to lose something like that. Um, the foundry is currently unprofitable. Some cash injection from that probably would have helped. Now that's 30 billion over the lifespan, which is I think probably roughly about like, well, I don't know, right? Like PlayStation 5, I think, came out right in like 2019, right? So, I mean, give it like five or 10 years or something like that. I mean, 30 billion is, is a nice amount to have injected over that time. So pretty bad for the company, even though they're getting, um, you know, this big cash injection on top of the chips act. Just be a little cautious if you're thinking of playing it, because I know there's hype. Uh, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Steve Rhodes.